name is George Headley with Hard Hat Biz Coach. My goal is to help contractors achieve their goals. So we're getting started today talking about a proven process to produce construction project performance. So when I put on my hard hat, I want to make sure I'm out there on the job site supervising and managing the, pro the project. So generally, I'll have a superintendent on every job and a, and a project manager. But, you know, sometimes I'm the superintendent or the project manager. But what I notice is when I have a superintendent out on the job and my job as a project manager is to show up on the job, I, I just never have enough time to do a good job walk. I just never have time to make sure everything's going well. You know, I'll do a drive by or I'll stop in for 10 minutes to meet the customer and then just leave. I can't tell you how many times I've been too busy to literally do a walk. You know, so you take a job like the one I'm on today out in the, out in the field there, one of our concrete tilt up jobs. You know, it takes a while to do a good job walk out here. You got a small little remodel, you can probably do it in 10 minutes. But I want you to make sure that someone's managing the project. I know you have a superintendent out there or a supervisor. What else do we have? Maybe you've got a foreman, but the foreman and the supervisor needs someone over them making sure they're doing a good job. About some of the mandatory requirements I demand of my construction clients uh, I work with a lot of clients, contractors who build office, industrial, warehouse, uh, retail buildings, public works, streets, uh, roads, pipelines, uh, even some custom homes. And I don't care what kind of business you have. If you're a contractor and you want to succeed, you need to take the time to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I demand a weekly job walk. The project manager goes out to the job every week and walks the job with the superintendent, the foreman, the general superintendent, whoever's out there managing your crew. And we do a, a long, detailed job walk. And first of all, we review the schedule. We take the schedule out and we review it. And every week I, I demand my project foreman or, or superintendent do a look ahead schedule. That's a, a schedule of the next two to four weeks of all the activities that are gonna, gonna basically happen over the next two to four weeks. And we review that and we look at that as we walk the job, the completion versus the scheduled completion. The goal is that we stay on, on schedule, right? Well, if we're starting to fall behind, then we can identify it early and make sure that we make adjustments to move the job faster and faster ahead. Bottom line, I've got to take the time to make sure we stay on schedule. I can't just hope it happens. I can't sit in the office and listen to reports or listen to emails. I've got to actually see it. Seeing is believing. Number two, first thing I want is a, each project manager who's in charge of the job to make sure they write and execute all the subcontracts quickly. I don't want to wait till halfway through the job. I want all the major material orders, the major suppliers, and all the all the subcontracts let in the first two to four weeks of every job that we start. Now, certain times you can't because maybe it's a design build. Maybe the designer hasn't selected the carpet. But yeah, we can make some exceptions. But generally, I want all subcontracts and major purchase orders ordered now. I don't want to wait. I've been burned. I've been halfway through a job and the PM didn't didn't write the cabinet contract. And sure enough, we call the cabinet guy who I've used for years. He says, I can't fit that in. I'm too busy. So uh, we got to go to the second or third bidder and lose 50 grand or 100 grand. And all because we didn't dig in, take time, shut the door, call the supplier, call the subcontractor, make a deal, and then execute, uh, uh, type up a contract, send it out, subcontract, get it executed and get it back. Really important. So once we have the subcontracts executed, we need to then verify any long lead items, uh, deadlines, milestones that, that might cause problems. So we can't really do that unless we, we know who our contractors are. And third, we want to update our job costs report every week. So we ask accounting to give us a job cost report. That's the production report. How many hours per hours budgeted? So when we start a job, we sit down with the foreman and the superintendent and the project manager, and we decide on how many hours per cost code we have allowed in the bid, in the job budget. So then every week we do an update. How many hours have we spent? How many hours do we have left? And then if you get more and more sophisticated, we put in the quantity 
So we know if we're half done, if we've spent half the hours. So that's a little bit of a, a program that has to be implemented in your company. But very important, walk the job with your foreman, crew leader, and make sure he understands how many hours are in the budget, how many hours he spent, and how many hours he has left to complete it, with or without overtime. Hopefully, hopefully your budget has a little bit or has none, but we can't spend more than we have. So if we're falling behind, we can do something about it now instead of at the end of the job. We go, oh, my gosh, we lost, we lost money again. Number four, we want to walk the job to see if there's any work that we shouldn't be doing that we're doing. Or we can the foreman or the crew leader or the superintendent say, hey, project manager, uh, the, 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 somebody's asked us to do this work. I don't think it's in the contract, is it? Should we do it? Should we not? Should we do it cost plus? So I can be all over it as the project manager and contact the owner and get a, a written authorization or we don't proceed. Uh, and so we look for current change orders, things we're doing maybe we shouldn't be doing, and we look for potential change orders that may be coming up that we could notify the client early and get approval early so we can not slow down the job and uh, make sure that's happening. Along the way, it's sort of along the same idea, we want to make sure we have the latest set of blueprints, plans, actual blueprint plans on the job at all times and all the approved submittals and shop, shop drawings on the job so the superintendent and foreman can make sure they're building per what's been approved and what's the latest and greatest with the addendums and changes and all the deltas and all the other things that happen out there every day. Number five, weekly punch list. So we walk the job of the super and the foreman and we do a punch list. We literally write out a punch list, a quality com control inspection item, things that need to get fixed, cleaned, moved. You know, if I see a crack in the concrete, let's get it fixed. If I, if I see a crack in the corner of a slab, let's get it fixed. Let's not wait till the end of the job when we'd rather not be there. Let's do it now. So we, we make a list of all, all the defective items or items that need to be addressed and we send it out to all the subcontractor suppliers who should be doing that work, and we give them seven days to complete it. So in the subcontract, we have a, uh, if, if we're subcontracting uh, a trade, say we're subcontracting contract, uh, co concrete and there's a crack, uh, we send them a note that this must be done. And in the subcontract, we have a, uh, a clause that says all punch list items will be completed within seven days of notice or we will do it for you at cost plus to 100%, cost plus 100%. So that puts some teeth into it. And I just hate it when I wait till the end of the job and see that same crack there that's been there for seven months. Give me a break. Get on with it, boys and girls. So anyway, that's very important. Next item, while we're doing the punch list walkthrough and cleanup walkthrough, uh, we look at the safety. We, we create a little safety report at the bottom of the punch list, safety issues, and we identify things that need to get improved in the area of safety. Maybe you've got an unshored trench. Maybe you need a handrail somewhere. Maybe there's rebar sticking up. Maybe there's no access into the site, or maybe the site needs to be fenced so the public can't walk in. I've been an expert in some cases where the public walks in over the weekend and falls and trips and sues the contractor. I don't want that to happen. So me as a project manager, I'm going to take some responsibility there to make sure that we address those issues quickly. All, all uh, safety issues must be repaired, remedied within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we can't have that sitting open for more than that. So number seven, um, we want to make sure all the safety meetings are being held. You know, in, in every state, they have a different rule, OSHA, uh, California, Texas, every, every state has a different safety requirement, but most most require a weekly safety meeting or every 10 days where all the crew gets together and we have a toolbox topic and uh, we talk about some part of safety and we all sign it and we all agree. So we want to make sure that's happening for our own crews and if I'm a general contractor for the crews that are working on the job, that's important. Next item. In order to make sure the subcontractors show up, which is a big problem in some, some projects and some companies in some areas of the country, so everybody tends to be too busy and taking on too much work. So now we got to make sure they're focused on our project <clears throat> if we subcontract certain trades. So I put in the subcontract that each subcontractor shall attend 
a weekly contractor, subcontractor meeting on site if you're going to be working there today or over the next 30 days. So I want to make sure everybody's in these meetings. And then I want to make sure before I call my subcontractor to come out and start work that he's seen the job. So we also put in our subcontracts that the subcontractor will visit, will visit the job two weeks prior to their being needed on the job and walk the job with the superintendent or the foreman, and then also within two to three days of when we need them. So we want them two weeks out and then a couple days out to make sure they're ready. They've ordered material. They got the crew ready. All the problems are solved. We'll walk the job, look at some issues, and we make sure we're ready for them and they're ready for us. So that's a mandatory uh, issue, one, one or two items, that's very important. While we're also out there, we can review the percent complete so we can have an accurate progress payment request or billing to our customer. And if we're, we're a subcontractor, we could meet with, a, with, the, with our customer, our general contractors, uh, agent, project manager, superintendent, and walk the job with them. Say, yeah, we're 40%, right? You're good with that? Okay, great. So we can verify that we're complete and we all in agreement. And also we can verify that our subcontractors and suppliers, what percent complete are they? So when they bill us, we don't get in an argument. We, I've been there. I've seen it. I know you're 62%. You Don't bill me 80. I know you're only 60. You haven't, you still haven't done tons of the work. So let's be real here. But seeing is believing again. And then lastly, uh, and uh, last couple items, project planning. We talk about the job. What else do we need to worry about? Do we have some deadlines? Do we have some problems? Do we have some customer complaints? Is there contract conformance issues? Is there workmanship issues? Is there project closeout requirements as built? We need to make sure are happening. Everything that we need to really address, we can do it at the, during these walkthroughs. And finally, when you get the job near complete, when I'm about 90% done, I want to start the project closeout process. So when I'm out there, we do a project closeout walkthrough. What else do we have to do? Have we called for inspection? Do we got the uh, as-builts completed? Do we have uh, uh, the fire department, have they been there to approve? The water department, the sewer department, the planning department, has the landscape uh, been uh, architect been out to verify the work? And so all the closeout close out documentation required, we make sure we, we're, we're, we're starting to get it in. I don't want to wait till we're done and we start asking. In fact, in our subcontract, I won't pay the subcontractors and suppliers uh, 100% and le uh, uh, until they've got the, all the documentation in. We put it right in the subcontract. We'll only pay you up to 90% until you get us all the paperwork and your punch list is complete. It's right in the subcontract. So we have a standard quality inspection checklist and a standard weekly safety in inspection checklist and any other issues. And we, we email it out uh, to everybody on the list who's got an issue and we make sure it gets done. Now I go back next week and we just start over again. Now, sometimes it's uh, your remote. Let's do it at least every two weeks. We've got to meet with the customer every two weeks. We got to meet with the, the superintendent every week, hopefully. Some of you I know have jobs 600 miles away. So, but every, twice a month, minimum, minimum, minimum. Okay. So that's a system that will guarantee it to improve your process to get your projects performing properly. Now, by the way, uh, most of you know I've got a book available. Get your construction business to always make a profit. You can get it on Amazon.com. And of course, on my website, hardhatbizcoach.com, I just uploaded over 100 working templates that I use to build my construction company and I use to help my clients, my coaching clients, uh, build a better systemized company. It includes templates on field and project management, scheduling, checklists, job meeting minutes, uh, everything you need to know to basically organize and manage your construction project. It also has templates on accounting, estimating, sales, and drafting your business plan. So if you're interested, check it out. It's pretty new. I just put it up a few weeks ago, and hopefully it'll uh, be something that'll help you build your business. So, so thanks for being here today. If I can help you, if you need some help as a coach or a consultant, give me, a, give me an email, and we'll set up a free introductory time to talk. 
and see how I can help.